Welcome to the IT Free Training video on Virtual Hard Disks or VHDs in Windows. This video will look at what a VHD is and the new VHDX file format. First, what is a Virtual Hard Disk or VHD? This is a file format that represents a physical drive in a file. So essentially, it is what is found on a hard disk drive or solid state drive in a file. Microsoft started using the file format with Microsoft Virtual PC. Essentially, when you create a virtual PC, you need somewhere to store the data from the virtual hard disks of the virtual machine and the VHD is where this data is stored. To understand this, consider that you have a physical server. On this physical server, you want to run a virtual server. A virtual server is a server that shares the hardware of the physical server and its resources. On this particular physical server, if a virtual server were to be created, this virtual server would run on the physical server. Like a physical server, the virtual server requires RAM, CPU and storage. In order to achieve this, the virtual server has its own virtual CPU, virtual RAM and virtual hard disk. The virtual components provide the interface to the physical hardware. For example, a virtual CPU may be created with a single core, even though the physical CPU has more cores. Virtual RAM is shared with the operating system. In some cases, it is possible to allocate more RAM to the virtual machines than there is in the physical server. The idea behind this is that not all virtual machines will be using all their allocated RAM at one time. Lastly, the virtual hard disk is what we are interested in in this case. Using the virtual hard disk, the virtual machine is able to store data on the physical drive on the server. You can already see that there are some advantages to virtual machines in the way CPU and RAM are allocated. With storage, since the virtual hard disk is providing an interface to the physical drive, more features can be added. For example, the ability to pause all access to the drive while a snapshot is created. A snapshot allows the hard disk to be reverted back to the state it was in when the snapshot was created. So how is this possible? To understand how virtual hardware works, consider this. A virtual server is created and runs applications inside it. Like an application running on a physical computer, the application needs access to an operating system to access features and hardware. To do this, it accesses an operating system that is installed on the virtual machine. Like a physical operating system, there are device drivers installed. These device drivers differ from regular device drivers in that they are used to access virtual hardware rather than physical hardware, but the applications and operating system running on the virtual machine do not know that. The virtual device driver accesses the virtual solution used to provide virtual services. The virtual solution then translates the use of the virtual hard disk to a physical file on a physical drive. You can start to see how this is possible. The virtual solution is able to modify and translate calls to the virtual hard disk, making the operating system think it is communicating to the physical hard disk. The advantage of this is that additional features can be added. For example, snapshots and dynamic disk features can be added. Something that is not possible with physical drives. All this does come at a cost and this cost is performance. Extra software is required to interpret and translate calls to access the physical hardware, which slows down the performance of the virtual machine compared with physical hardware. Now let's have a closer look at the VHD file format. The virtual hard disk format, or VHD, was first acquired by Microsoft in 2003 by way of acquiring the company that developed it. The technology was first used in the Microsoft product Microsoft Virtual PC and has continued to be used in products like Hyper-V. The format also allows a number of different file formats for the virtual hard disk. These include fixed, dynamic and differencing. To understand how these work, I will have a look at each one at a time. The fixed virtual machine is simply when the file containing the virtual hard disk is the same size as the virtual hard disk. 
In this case, if you had a 20 gigabyte virtual hard disk, it would take up 20 gigabytes of size on the physical drive in the form of a VHD file. The advantage of this is improved performance. Since the virtual drive is the same size as the VHD file, it is a simple process to write data to the file. The disadvantage of this is that fixed drives are slower to create. For example, if you created a 100 gigabyte fixed drive, you would need to wait until a 100 gigabyte VHD file is created. If you have slow mechanical drives, this can be a time consuming process, especially if you need to create multiple virtual hard disks. The next type is dynamic. Dynamic uses storage space as required. For example, if you created a 100 gigabyte virtual disk, this could have 100 gigabytes of data placed on the drive. However, the initial creation would use the bare minimum amount of space. If, say, 20 gigabytes of files were placed on the virtual hard disk, the following would occur. On the physical drive, the VHD file would increase in size to 20 gigabytes. This could increase to a maximum of 100 gigabytes. You may never need to use this much space, but it is there if you need it. You can see why some administrators will create dynamic drives bigger than what they feel they need in case they need more space later on. The advantage of dynamic drives is that they are fast to create. Usually, a dynamic drive will only take a few seconds to be created, while a fixed drive will require the administrator to wait until a file of the size of the fixed drive has been created. The disadvantage of dynamic drives is there is reduced performance. In order to have the drive expand as required, the data on the VHD file is not laid out as well as it could be. After a dynamic disk has had data stored and removed from it, to make it work better the dynamic virtual disk can be compacted. This process arranges the data and removes any space that is no longer used. Microsoft recommended that you perform this after installing the operating system due to the number of temporary files created during the install process. Compacting is also recommended after deleting large amounts of data or when you are archiving the VHD. For example, storing it on optical media. The next disk type I will look at is Differencing. This disk type records the differences from the master disk known as the parent disk. Let's consider the following. If you create a virtual hard disk, you could configure it how you want it. For example, installing an operating system on it. Once you have the virtual hard disk configured the way you want it, the next step is to create a second virtual hard disk known as a child. The second virtual hard disk will use the parent drive for its data. This means that a virtual machine using this virtual drive will see the data stored on the parent drive. If any changes are made to the drive, the child drive is used to record these changes. The combined parent drive and changes on the child drive are what are seen by the virtual machine. So you can see that the virtual machine sees the one virtual hard disk. However, the virtual hard disk is the parent and child disks combined into one. The parent contains the initial data and the child contains any changes that have been made to the parent. The main advantage of a differencing disk is that it can save space. If I were to add a second differencing disk, notice that a virtual machine that is using this disk will once again see the data on the parent disk. If the virtual machine makes changes to the virtual disk, these changes would be recorded in the differencing disk. You can see how using differencing can save a lot of space if you have a number of virtual machines that are accessing the same data and also how it keeps track of changes. If you are planning to use differencing virtual hard disks, it is recommended that once the parent is created, you make it read only. Any changes to the parent will affect all differencing virtual disks that are using that parent. You can see there are a number of different choices for how you configure your virtual hard disks. Regardless of which VHD format that you choose, there are some advantages to it. First, since VHDs are file based, they are easy to move, backup, and restore. If you, for example, needed to move a virtual machine from one server to another, you would simply move the VHD file and its configuration file to the other server, 
import the configuration files, and start up the virtual machine. VHDs also allow easy duplication and thus allow pre-built configurations. For example, you could perform a base install of Windows Server. Once the install is complete, each time you want a new virtual machine running in Windows Server, you could duplicate the VHD file, start the virtual machine using the duplicated VHD file, and then make the required changes. VHD files were first developed in the early 2000s, so there are some limitations. VHD files are limited to 2 terabytes in size. VHDs also add overhead to hard disk operations. When virtual machine technology was first developed, it emulated existing physical hardware on the market. Operating systems and hardware back then were not designed to run virtual machines. Nowadays, hardware has improved to offer direct access to hardware for virtual machines and thus this overhead has decreased. However, there are still some limitations in the VHD format that are better understood by looking at the VHDX format. The VHDX file format has improved the virtual disk format and addresses some of the issues with VHDs. First, there is support for 64 terabyte virtual disks to be created, which addresses the 2 terabyte limit with VHD. Next, there is improved protection against data corruption. VHDX files use logging when updates are performed. This helps protect the virtual drive if there is a power loss while the virtual hard disk is being updated. To address some of the performance issues with virtual hard disks, VHDX has improved alignment with large sector disks. If the virtual disk can use the same sector size as the physical disk it is stored on, this can improve the efficiency of the virtual drive. This is particularly important when using block-based software like backup and restore software. Next, there is improved performance of dynamic and differencing disks. If you are using either of these disk types, it is worth taking the time to have a look at VHDX disks. The changes in the VHDX format also gives better support for trim. Trim is a technology often found in solid state drives. Trim, when used, allows for better distributions of writes on solid state drives rather than particular parts being used more than others. This extends the life of the drive. The improved alignment feature allows trim to work better. The VHDX file format is only supported on Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8. Windows, however, does allow you to convert a VHD to VHDX and vice versa. This means that if you decide to move a virtual machine that is using a VHDX file to an older operating system, you can convert the virtual hard disk. This is great because it allows you to try out the new format without having to worry about backward compatibility later on unless the virtual hard disk file is greater than 2040 gigabytes. That covers it for the basics of VHD and VHDX files. In the next video, I will perform a demonstration of how this can be used. I hope to see you in that video and the other free videos from us. Until then, thanks for watching.